Howdy folks and welcome to Live Equestrian. My name's Teddy. This is Scott. We're just a couple of friends from opposite sides of the Cascade Mountain Range in Oregon with the shared goal of becoming the best horseman we can be. We love bringing folks along, hoping to inspire them in their faith, family, relationships, and personal growth. Horsemanship's the tool we use to communicate. Amongst folks who share this passion, it's a universal language. Ride along with us and grab on to a little cowboy wisdom as we share stories and lessons from the arena to the campfire. Come on, let's celebrate this equestrian life. On our recent trip to California to pursue Hackamore knowledge, Scott and I had the opportunity to sit and visit with Brian Newbert. Now Brian shared with us some stories of growing up and riding with equestrian legends. And Brian is a legend in his own right, so we really valued our time with him. And we hope you enjoy hearing some of the stories of how he learned to do a little a lot and how that impacted his horsemanship. It's very strange to me, but I mean, so I did get to work with Tom and after I worked with him for, I don't know how many times, he asked me to throw in with him on a colt starting deal. And Ray had told me, you won't believe this guy. You, this is so cool. You won't believe it. I'd, I'd give anything to trade places with you. You won't believe it. Wait till you see Tom ride. So I did see Tom ride every day, all day. I didn't see nothing. He looked like anybody else to me. And I got to be friendly enough with him that we could talk pretty openly. And I said, you know, Ray Hunt told me, now I guarantee you this, his horses weren't like anybody else I ever saw, mm -hmm. but there was nothing to see. And I said, I said, uh, Ray kept telling me, you got to get to see Tom. You got to ride with Tom. Well, you can't believe this is going to be great. But I watched you ride, and I don't, I don't see no. You don't look like anybody else. And he laughed, and he said, "You know why that is? Because it's the little things that make the big difference." Oh. And I'll guarantee my time with him, when I was with him starting those horses, that was the. That's when I prospered the most, progressed the most. Right. Is during that time, and we didn't work on nothing but the little things. Mm-hmm. And it's inspired me to think more about the little things. And guys that cowboyed with him, I mean, I went to work for Ray Hunt over here at Gerlock on a cow outfit. And we were all a bunch, I mentioned my cousin and Joe Walter and a bunch of young guys. Well, there was one like old guy on the crew. And I don't, he, looking back, he was probably 45 or something, 50. And he was kind of quiet. So I thought, I want to see if I can get friendly with this guy. So I said, uh, what have you done with your life? He said, just cowboy. Oh, yeah, what states? Mm, just Nevada. Oh, yeah. What ranches? A few, but pretty much just the 25 there at Battle Mountain. The 20, when were you at the 25? Oh, I was there for many years. Did you know a guy named Tom Dorrance? Oh, yeah, I worked with him a lot. What can you tell me about him? I'll tell you something about the guy greatest horseman any of us ever saw and you know what was really strange about him never trained a horse I said what do you mean just what I said he rode with the crew and when it come his turn to sort cattle or do anything with them it was a jaw dropper for us and yet he just rode with us and I told that to Tom and he had a good laugh over that <laughs> because it's subtle things yes it's little things that make the big difference and and Jim even told me, Jim talks about, Jim Jim was the oldest and he used to come see me. Well, sometimes I'd be camped out starting a bunch of horses by myself and Jim would just come and sit on his tailgate. He was he had a cane in one hand and a crutch in the other. He was, that's about all he could do. He'd go around and visit. And he said, yeah, I kind of got into, I got around Tom when it was dang near too late. And he said, I left home early and Struck out for Nevada, and I never. It was after I left that he got on to Clifford Wade was a big inspiration, and then, and then uh, Fred, Fred go to California and come back, and 
And this Tom, golly, he's come visit me and he can do all kinds of things. And uh, so Jim was telling me, I'm getting a horse ready for the fair. And, you know, you got to turn them around, stop them and all this kind of stuff. And this horse is nervous and he's all troubled up. And, and he said, uh, um, <laughs> he'd asked Tom, what do you think I ought to do with him? And Tom said, I think you ought to turn him out. Turn him out. The fair's only a week away. Why would you say turn him out? Because that's what you do with a sick horse. Sick? He ain't sick. He's sick of you, Tom, and all this fair preparation you got. I mean, uh, Jim. He's sick of you and this whole stuff. You got along good with that horse before you planned on showing him at the fair. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's kind of true. Tom, I asked Tom, did you ever show a horse? Well, if you could call it that. He said the Wallowa County uh, Cattlemen's Association putting on a fair and they wanted to start a stock horse contest. So they, they wanted me to show a horse. And he said, actually I brought two and I give one to Clifford to show and I brought one to show. I won first and Clifford went second. <laughs> <laughs> Never showed again. Hmm. 